There are a lot of things to calculate in this problem, so we'll take them one at a time. We're given this voltage and all the capacitance values, and we're asked to calculate in part A the equivalent capacitance for the whole circuit, and in part B the charge is Q and the voltage is V on and across each of the capacitors. Let's start by noticing that these two capacitors, C3 and C4, are connected in series, so we can replace them with one equivalent capacitor that I'll call C34. I'll draw it here, along with the other capacitors unchanged. We can calculate the capacitance C34 using the reciprocal rule because they're connected in series. When you substitute values, calculate and take the reciprocal, you find that this equivalent capacitance is 2.1 microfarads. I'll put that down here for safekeeping. Next, we can notice that these two capacitors, C2 and C34, are connected in parallel, so we can replace them with an equivalent capacitor. I'll call that C234 and draw it here with the other capacitors, now just 1 and 5, left unchanged. Because C2 and C34 are in parallel, we find their equivalent capacitance by simply adding them, and that gives us 6.3 microfarads. I'll store that value here. Finally, we can get the circuit's equivalent capacitance by noticing that these three are now in series. So we replace them with one equivalent capacitor called CEQ and calculate its value using the reciprocal rule. Adding all the reciprocals and taking the reciprocal of the final value gives us the circuit's overall equivalent capacitance. And that gives us a value of 2.5 microfarads. So we found the value we were asked to find in part A. Now let me erase this and start working on the values for part B. We can start by calculating the charge on the final equivalent capacitor. That's the capacitance times the voltage across it, which is 220 volts. And we find that the charge on the equivalent capacitor is 5.5 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs, which is 550 microcoulombs. That equivalent capacitor is composed of three capacitors in series, one step back in our chain of drawings. Because all capacitors in series have the same charge, the charge on the equivalent capacitor has to equal the charge on capacitor 1, capacitor 234, and capacitor 5. So now we know two of the values we were asked to calculate, and I'll store this other intermediate result down here. Knowing these charges now, we can calculate the voltage across capacitors 1 and 5 using these relations, substituting numbers, to find that they both work out to 65 volts. There's 65 volts across capacitor 1 and across capacitor 5. We can also work out the voltage across the equivalent capacitor 234 using the same relation which works out to 87 volts. So we know there is 87 volts across capacitor 234, which is also this voltage I'll draw here. And now we notice that that is the voltage also across capacitor C2. So we can fill in that value. Knowing that voltage, we can calculate the charge on capacitor 2. And it works out to 37 microcoulombs. Erasing again to deal with capacitors 3 and 4, we can start by calculating the charge on that equivalent capacitor 3, 4. It works out to 180 microcoulombs. Then because capacitors 3 and 4 are in series, we know they must have the same charge, so Q3 equals Q4 which is the value we just calculated, 180 microcoulombs. Knowing those charges, we can finish the problem by calculating the voltages across those two capacitors. We use these relations, substitute the numbers, and calculate to find there is 43 volts across capacitor 3 and 43 volts across capacitor 4. And that gives us all the values we were asked to find.